Hell Mary Meter Base. Let me finish today's video is um, in regards to something that I kind of came into uh, to contact through Copper Cab on um, Google Plus through his YouTube video. And originally, me and Michelle were like, oh, how are we going to handle this? Um, so, ran into this young man that was very mean, very hurtful on Google Plus to me in particular. And uh, he started to try to razz me and get me extremely angry. Uh, so I blocked him. But thank goodness to Google Plus, we have his messages um, on, on my Gmail. So I looked at through some of the hurtful comments that he said against me and, and Michelle. And um, I would I would have loved to share them with you. But first of all, the reason I'm not going to share them with you is two reasons. Number one, he's only 14 years old. And second of all is, I don't think talking about this actual content is going to change anything. Um, so, and third reason is, I don't want to potentially see a litigious, what, what is the word, litigious? Litigious, litigated, litigation against us, per se, something of defamation of character or something like that. Um, we don't want to defame anybody, and uh, so I was decided not to bother repeat the comments, because first of all, they were extremely painful, and it's not going to solve nothing. So the first thing is, is um, the story in short is, um, can we play his, some of his video here, or would it be a violation of the Fair Use Act? Well, I don't think we will. <laughs> but I'll give you a link to it so you can go back and watch it yourself. Um, so the whole topic that started out was, was let's talk about gender. Uh, versus biological sex and so he's got a couple of people that know that yes he's a comedian yes he has a he's a humorist um, but in this video he's nothing he's not being a humorist he's not being a comedian in this video now he says a very um, I know his back I know his backstory I know what happened to his family I know everything for the most part that I could know without being family Okay, and the thing I'm trying to get at is, what we're going to talk about is gender, not biological sex. Um, and in biological sex, there's, um, it gets confusing too because then you've got intersex slash hermaphrodite and stuff, uh, which me and Michelle are hermaphrodite. We're not going to go through that and, and talk about hermaphrodites at this point. We're talking about gender only. And the first question is, is, um, I want to know, is gender, is it nature or is it nurture or is it both or is it controlled by neither one? I remember when Michelle and I, um, especially I was Michelle's guardian angel and I was watching Michelle grow up. And we better know it's a spirit guide. Because technically I'm a spirit guide, not a guardian angel. That's something completely different. But um, I watched Michelle grow up um, in her early years. And she never could quite figure out exactly where she fit in the, um, the scale of gender. She didn't feel like one. And she didn't quite feel like the other. And she kind of felt kind of like, you know, like some days, like a balance scale. Some days she goes more this way. Sometimes she goes more that way. It's just where Michelle is, okay? You know, so she kind of tips the scales down back and forth. Um, but for the most part, Michelle is kind of in the center. Um, the scale pans might move up and down just a tiny smidge, but they're not going to go like, whoop, all one way or whoop, the other way. It's not Michelle. Um, so... We know, uh, in the case of Copper Cab, he, now she, uh, yeah, we're going to have, it's going to take a while for us to get used to that too, so, okay, we're not trying to disrespect Copper Cab. I'm going to try to keep the pronouns out of this for the time being, if I can, because I'm not going to use the word shit, 
Like Michelle, uh, someone who used to call her shit. <laughs> okay. She, he, it. It's not shit. No, I don't want to go there. Uh, I'm not going to use the term it. That's degrading completely. Okay. No. Cup of cat prefers to be called her, her, and hers. And so I'll try to respect that. But I might slip. Okay. Forgive me. Um, Copper Cow had, um, in her early career on Hollywood Hellbillies, um, was trying to, it was just when he, or she was 21 years old, was going through what a lot of 21 year olds do, you know, except she was very lucky. She got an opportunity to make a break and become a rap star. And the video, Gingerbread, which I'm also going to... Michelle, do you have a link to it? I have a link to it. Yeah. All right, we have a link to that. We'll put that video clip link up as well so you can watch it. It was Copper Cap's um, debut video from Hollywood Hill Billis. And um, we saw it on TV, and now we saw it um, on YouTube when we watched it. We liked the song. It's cute. Okay, but at the point we're not talking about the song. The point is, is his parents died when they, um, died when he was very young. He was living with his grandmother. Her name is she's called Mima. M E M A Mima. Okay, and he lived with his older aunt named Dee Dee, which is short for Deidre. And you know, he um. His family is a very loving people. Maybe a little bit um, awkward to some of the cosmopolitan, laissez-faire people today. Okay, but only the point was he was in Georgia. Now, when we watched Hollywood Hillbilly season one, we wanted to watch season two. Unfortunately, Michelle ended up giving up her Sally dish. Before we get a chance to watch season two. And so I don't know all the story about how Dee Dee's winning with Paul and all that. But I do know that um, that was going to be the premise of season two, which we didn't get a chance to see. And if anybody has a link to the videos and programs on DVD or website, we'd love to watch the videos. We went to the real TV website. It doesn't have them available to DVD box set where you can download in order to have an online subscription so we can watch it. So we're really kind of left, we kind of feel like we kind of lost half the story. Okay. Um, so let's get back to the main point here. So after he started out his career and, um, you know, like a lot of youngsters, you know, it didn't quite work out for him. That happens to everybody, kid. Don't worry about <laughs> Me and Michelle are not perfect either. But the thing was, I'm trying to say is, is that, uh, so he went back to do YouTube videos because he was familiar with, um, he was comfortable with the medium. And, um, so he started doing some videos that were definitely along with his gingers had souls and, uh, quite a few others. And, Really, really, some of the videos, you kind of seriously wonder if he's serious or not. Like his message to Apple, which I thought was kind of funny, especially when his uncle accidentally ran over his iPhone 6S. Um, in that case, that video, he was trying to make a joke, uh, or he, he does do satire in skits and stuff like that. So when he came out and he um, came out of the closet, some people are saying this is this guy's not serious. This guy's a joke. This guy's convenient. Michelle reminded me of an episode of Murphy Brown, which I have not actually personally really remembered too well. It was about this comedian. Um, it was this comedian with a potty mouth. Okay, and FYI, wanted to interview this guy. And so the producer's like, okay, well, you know, here's the problem. We're going to have to tape delay it so that we can beep out any nasty stuff. He says, this guy apparently was like an Andrew Dice Clay. And one of the things that happened in the show is he, the guy broke down in tears and says, why does everybody think I'm always trying to be funny when I'm hurting? Why does everybody think I'm trying to be funny when I'm hurting? 
Because I'm sure Capra Cap is saying the same thing to herself. Why does everybody realize, those who understand, know you're being serious. Those two people out there who only know you as a comedian slapstick, who don't think you can be serious. It's like the kid that cried wolf too many times. Or the kid that called 911 too many times when there when really was no fire, okay? All of a sudden, this building's burning, and he's he's sitting in his bedroom, and he's trapped. And the fire department refuses to come because every time they came before, he never, ever was a fire. There's a difference between comedy and this. And I have to be honest when I say I don't find this funny. The amount of hateful vitriol that I saw against him or her, I'm sorry with that, was absolutely horrific. One person on YouTube even had the nerve to suggest that she should kill herself. I hate to say there's a lot of transgender people who have unfortunately taken that person's advice and killed themselves. We have lost a lot of beautiful people. I don't care if you're into trans or not, or to transgender or whatever. Let's talk about some of the people who are struggling with some of the same stuff, the copper copper story. Chelsea Manning is about me and Michelle's age. Okay. She was one of the many people who ratted on the U.S. government and ended up being locked up in Leavenworth after she was convicted of releasing information to the public that should never been released to the public. She is in a man's prison because she was convicted as a man. They treat her terrible. She has attempted to commit suicide several times. And one of the things is that deep down she kind of wishes that she hadn't done that. Now when Michelle and I first heard the story we were like, well, Kind of like some of these people think, yeah, but did she try to change her gender because she's trying to start over? Or did she really change her gender because she thinks it's a good excuse to get out of Leavenworth? I don't know. But now we know more about the situation enough that we can at least say that no matter which way it was originally, it's not the case now. Okay? You don't make fun of that. Second thing the copper cab had said is to have talked about depression and anxiety. Now, jokes aside, by some of you, some of you horrible people out there, I know I'm gonna lose some of my 27 viewers. I can count on it. I'm sorry, guys. I hope I don't upset my real my my regulars, but they you've been through a lot. You know who I am. You know Michelle. You know what I'm telling you is the truth. This. It's just going to stop. Okay. Um, so, let's just get a little bit of soda here. I have to tell you, right now, that as we saw enough in the world already, in the murders at Orlando, Florida. The murders in other parts of the country. The hate crimes. It's got to stop. It's not helpful to us. It's not helpful to anybody in the community. You may not like transgender people. But there's still somebody's family member. Somebody's friend. You know, and there's still special to some, at least one person. And we have no right, and we don't, we have no right to judge another person. This is something that Copper Cap is going to have to come to grips with. At least you can do is try to have a little empathy. I know that it's not popular, but then again, back in the 80s, the gay, the gays and the lesbians didn't do too well prior to Stonewall. There was 
1969 against Stonewall, right? 1968, prior to that, that we had the sodomy laws, which are like blue laws in Connecticut. You, you were gay, you could be arrested. Okay? You could be thrown in jail. You could have an unfair jury stacked up against you. And it was prior to DSM for our the mental illness um, homosexuality was declared a mental illness. Today, in Britain, not in the U.S., the U.S. hasn't yet adjusted. The psychiatry has said transgendered is not a mental illness. Okay? It's not a mental illness. It's who you are. And cat, if you kick over my soda, I am going to be very upset. Get over here. Oh, it's right next to Michelle's iPhone. My butt on the floor. Um. So, a group of, um, psychiatrists in the United Kingdom are saying is, we, as professionals, do not see transgender people as having a mental illness anymore. Because, oh, there's a stigma attached just like there was to homosexuality, okay? The stigma was they think you're not a good worker. They think you're going to flip out. They think you're going to do something stupid. They think that you're unhinged. They thought all kinds of hateful things. However, however, Copper Cap has a condition. And he's even said so. He's suffering from anxiety and clinical depression. Clinical depression hurts. I see Michelle suffer from seasonal affective disorder. And she can be just as bad as clinical depression. What's worse is it's only during certain times of the year that Michelle almost is ready to the point to terminate herself because of so much that she had been under. I could just visualize what Copper Cab is going through with no support from the community at large. We do not know. We do not know. We do not know. Maybe Copper Cab can help answer some of this question. How much his own family is standing behind him right now? In Michelle's case, her family threw her to the curb. They wanted nothing to do with Michelle. And since that time, Michelle has suffered unduly. But Michelle, you know, it also has a couple difference. Michelle is 48 years old, and Michelle is tough as nails and doesn't give up easily. Easily. Never gave up because she doesn't want to give up. But in the last few years, the pressure has been so much. And yet, she's still trying to hold on. But she sometimes has dark thoughts, too. And But then I have to remind her that it's not a good idea to do something rash or stupid. Because if you do that, you got to repeat this whole journey all over again. That's, that's really disheartening to think about it. You're struggling now. You kill yourself. And you got to go through this exact same life all over again. It's like playing a video game. Sure, like, I mean, you can, you can, you can quit the game. But you're not going to move ahead. you got to keep playing that part of the game until you succeed to the next level. Legitimately. Okay? And that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Today, Michelle has made, for the most part, some positive moves. Okay? But she still struggles. So, Copper Cap, a.k.a. 
Claire Cottrell, a.k.a. Mick Cottrell. I'm with you 100%. If I was living near your home, I would personally go over there and give you a hug. Because I know what you're going through. And I want you to know that there are people who will back you up and show you compassion and true care. Please don't do anything foolish. Please don't do anything bad. Please don't turn to self-medication with drugs and alcohol. Please don't get a gun and hurt yourself. Please. There's been enough blood shed. Please don't be another number. You know, we're going to give you some suggestions on how you help, can help you deal with the depression. And it's a real problem for so many. You know, these suggestions apply mostly to the United States. I don't know if Georgia has this. In Connecticut, if you dial 211, that's 211, you can talk to a counselor, which is a suicide, it's really a suicide prevention hotline, but they do also have all the resources available to you, such as um, the name and phone number of your local mental health agency to help you get the therapy and the counseling you need. Even sometimes it doesn't hurt to talk to somebody. I know that Michelle struggled a lot in her early years. And I know that she had to do that for the same reason after her parents kicked her to the curb. So what I'm trying to tell you is Please don't think it's being weak if you're going to seek help for depression and, you know, anxiety. It's okay. It's okay. It's something that you, even you yourself, said you need help with. You're young. You're tougher than some people. You suffered a lot of trauma as a youngster. Go out there and take your advice. At least you'll feel better to be in counseling. And hopefully that'll help you to understand and come to grips with what you're feeling. And second thing is, depending on um, the therapy session, they might want you to try antidepressants. I have nothing wrong with antidepressants for short-term use. And it can be used in concert with therapy, but not by itself, okay? Um, antidepressants are very dangerous things. You may not think they're dangerous, but look what happened with Adam Lanza. Adam Lanza, had uh, they say he had Asperger's, and he was on a lot of antidepressants. And the medication in his Asperger's screwed up his head so bad that he went out there into Sandy Hook School and he killed all those those children and teachers. It was for that reason it was decided that Michelle cannot take antidepressants because she has Asperger's too. And she was concerned that she could because of the medication um, go off the deep end. And so she decided, uh, in concert with her um, medical doctor, which was prescribing the antidepressants, she said, first of all, this stuff isn't working at all for me. And, and second of all is, um, I don't want to end up looking at Adam Lanza. Because I really love all life. She said, I don't want to do that. But sometimes when you're in the proper care of a, a properly trained psychologist psychiatrist it helps but you know therapy is key you got issues in your life you got to deal with nothing to do with your gender okay now um the next topic and we 
I did say at the beginning, we're going to talk about this, and now I kind of went off with this personal plea to Capricap. Cap. But what is gender exactly? Well, gender is kind of like how you perceivably see yourself in your um, own skin. And while some people would say is everything is diametric, this either male or female, there's no in between. Um, medical science has said, and we're talking about medical now, not psychological, which is still medical, but it's not in the same league, that there is at least five hermaphroditic condition states. Okay? And there's probably at least five genders, and they're independent of each other. So, um, Michelle is a hermaphrodite. And she's not quite in the center. She's kind of like slightly more towards the masculine, but she's not like masculine. And like I share this body with Michelle, so I know about this body and the way it's built and the way it works. Okay, which yet some people are trying to say that there's only two gen there's only two biological sexes. I don't think that as I said, medical science has found that there's more than two. Well, gender is a little more fluid because gender is independent. It's not the same. Okay? Number one, you can be physically a male. Big, hugging, strapping male, right? Big guy, you know, muscles, big, big beard and everything. And yet, you can feel that you're very feminine and dainty inside. So, what happens in that case? Here you are, this big guy, and you're like sitting there in the kitchen, you enjoy cooking, you enjoy sewing, you enjoy the needlepoint, you know, you enjoy watching your, your grandchildren and your children, and you have a very feminine personality. But you're a big, masculine, strapping guy, eh? Well, likewise, you can be, um, Everything perfect, little Miss Barbie, you know, little female, you know, you know, maybe been a mother of two. I know, because sometimes people, especially my age, I'm 48 years old, you know, you could be a mother of two, grandmother, whatever, right? And the next thing you love to do is get on a creeper, get on in your car, and work on the engine and the transmission and the differential. And you love getting your hands dirty, and you love putting things together and blowing things up. And you don't really like to take care of the kids that much. You'll say to your husband, that's your job. I, since you enjoy taking care of the kids, I'll let you do it. It's kind of funny because transgender people can actually benefit by living with the transgender or a uh, person of, the opposite, of their opposite gender. Why not? Okay, if you are a very feminine gender and you happen to fall in love with a very masculine gender, right? Why not kind of balances off in either way so that the effeminate one um, might take more of the the maternal roles and the more masculine takes care of the paternal roles. I don't care if the paternal one has a penis or, or a vagina. It doesn't matter, okay? We're not talking about biological sex. Biological sex, as I said, are independent. There's no reason why you cannot be that way. Of course, it's not. It's kind of fluid. Now, here's the next question. And I, I, I thought about this, and I keep asking myself is, is gender a social role that, that our society has taught us? Or is it something that we're in born with? Or is it a combination of both? Is it something that we may have in our heart from when we were born? Like I said, or is it something that we are taught in um, through school and through church and through family involvement and social involvement? I don't really know what it is because the world is so complicated. And even me, I, me and Michelle had looked at the situation. We tried to find this, you know, arguments for or against that, and we can't find it. 
So the only thing we can do is we're going to say is the jury still on that one. We don't know which the story is. Um, so I guess that's about it. So what I'm going to do at the end of this video is number one, I'm going to give you the link to the video that started it all. Okay. Number two, I'm going to give you a link to his earlier gingerbread video, which is on the same channel, by the way. Okay. So you can find it on the same channel as the main video. And you know what? Should I go ahead and give a link to the main channel? Yeah, I think I will also give you a link to his his main channel so you can watch the videos yourself. And uh, all the videos. And the most important thing I'm trying to say is you can be a comedian but I don't think he's joking with this. I don't think he's making satire here. You may not like me for saying that. That's fine. But you know what my mom told me? If you don't like what someone's got to say and you can't come up with a nice decent response don't say anything because they're not trying to attack you. They're just saying what is on their heart and their heart how they feel about the things that they see around them. So for now, everybody, I want to thank you all for watching this and uh, I'm open to your comments, your concerns, your questions. And, uh, and I thank you very much for watching this video and I wish Copper Cap the best of luck. And like I said, if, if I could have gotten to where you live, I would have personally given you a hug. I think you could use one. But you know what? I don't live nearby there, so would you accept at least a video in your defense for now? Maybe someday we'll meet. I don't know. Okay, guys. That's it for now. Bye-bye.